Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're in Foundry VTT version 11. And we're looking at Curse of Strahd and continuing to build out a bit of this. This is probably going to be a reasonably short video compared to some of them, uh, assuming everything records this time. <coughs> cough, cough. Um, what have I got on screen? So just as a reminder, because I know not everybody watches everything, what I've got on screen here is the strahdreloaded.com um uh, look at the curse of strad because it's not the easiest module to follow and then there's some heavy adjustments that have been made just to the flow and things like that um, from the original module now th this gives you lots of hints about how to change stuff and things uh, to make it flow better but it's not a replacement for the original module but it's well worth a look if you're considering running this and i like the flow of this one quite a lot so that's pretty much what i'm following so what we've done is we've we've covered this welcome to Barovia um, piece, and I've set my maps up in a way to uh, to be able to follow this. Uh, but we've pretty much finished setting up what we need for Barovia. Now remember, planning ahead is we don't want to plan in detail too far ahead. But I am creating things like the buildings and such, some of which unfortunately they may never visit, and it's like oh I've wasted that time. But in place like the village of Barovia, you're not too sure you know they're going to be in the village. They could visit them, so those are a good thing. Knowing that they're going to be in the village to prepare those. There's other places where well they might not go to those locations at all um, so don't bother ever preparing them now we're going to have a little bit of one of those in this video when we do into the valley so we're going to create two scenes for this um, we're going to create the Barovian scouts and Van Richten's cache now Van Richten's cache is one of those it's only relevant if they know about the cache and purposely go off road to find it if they don't know about it it's going to be an entire scene that we never need so what i would recommend normally is unless i think that they could get to this in the same session as potentially getting the clue i wouldn't bother building it um if they have that conversation if they find out about it then there's a strong possibility they'll go looking and I need to make sure I've got that scene ready. Because I'm building this not just to run once, but probably to run more than once with different groups and packaging it potentially to share with you guys, um, I want to have it in there. So that's what I'm going to be doing, but just so you know, that's what I'm following. So back in here, what have I done in the interim? Um, we finished all of these townhouses and stuff uh, that we needed to do, which is great. I also, because uh, <laughs> you guys are really useful, and I, I genuinely need, mean that really useful, I had missed out a couple of doors here. <laughs> Again. So that's now been rectified, and I've made sure I've got my, um, my levels staircases in and things like that. So I just had, uh, as I, I do recommend, you know, once you've created scenes, have a walk through, take characters through, make think sure things work the way you want. Um, and I just put in the addition of where we've got these fireplaces. Hopefully you can hear there's a little bit, it's not too loud, don't want it to be intrusive, but a little bit of background noise where we can hear those fireplaces crackling if we are all in that room together. So, um, finished Barovia basically and I created a new folder for Into the Valley and as you can see I've already created a scene well actually i copied and pasted a scene um I duplicated it and stripped out everything i don't need wasn't any quicker to do it that way to be honest but this is for the barovian scouts so this is literally this is not supposed to be a um uh, a combat encounter <laughs> It's not supposed to be. Um, this is just part of their road journey. So first thing I want to do, I've used, I like this image, but I've used it before. Let's pick a different image. So my background image, again, I need to make sure I'm sticking my things in the correct folder. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder for this scene. Into the valley, which is going to match with my stuff over here. Just trying to keep myself tidy because uh, you guys know i do struggle with that <laughs> shut up <laughs> uh, and i've pre-prepared some images and things for this so um it never likes to have them on extra large to you know it always defaults off again so this is basically them leaving the uh, the village itself 
And the first thing they're going to encounter as they're leaving the village is a footbridge over the river itself. So that's what I thought I would use for this. Nice image I've generated with uh, with AI. Um, now I can see it on the big screen. I want to check to make sure there is nothing in here that you suddenly go and go, oh, hang on a minute, it's a bicycle. <laughs> so if you are using AI, just check to make sure they haven't put power lines in in the background or anything like that. But yep i like that it fits our theme it's nice and muddy and this is not going to be a combat encounter this is literally going to be a scene where we're going to be describing as you set off the silent village of barovia the fog creeping around your feet as you pass onto the old svalich road a sea of tall pale green grasses stretch out before you on either side of the road all the way up to the edge of the ivlis river the sky above is a dull grey, the clouds heavy with the promise of yet more rain. It's not long before you can see the old arched stone bridge in the distance that spans the clear blue river ahead. Crossing it, you find yourself on a muddy road that winds its way through the trees. The air is thick with the scent of damp earth and decaying leaves and the trees pressing close, casting deep shadows that carve dark gouges across the road. So we just want to create that bit of atmosphere. Now, it says about impending rain. I don't need to add any more mist onto this, I don't think. I could do, um, but I don't think I do. What I do want to do is, and you've seen me do this before, but not everybody sees every video. I repeat myself a lot with that, don't I? Is um, I'm going to create myself a couple of buttons on the side here. Uh, and I'm going to choose, I'm going to make sure I'm in the right thing here. So I'm in my in valley. I'm going to choose my button to be the same as my scouts here because they are just going to loom out of the mist. I like that word, loom out of the mist. Uh, so I'm going to create that tile there. I can change that shape a bit. Um, and I'm going to do. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave that tile as is. That's fine. Um, but I do want to create a new tile here on my map. Nowhere near that big. In fact, let me... I just want to check. I just want to check because I wasn't paying attention. Um, I'm going to draw a... Yeah, I'm going to draw a new one here. I'm going to go to that path. Make sure this is in into the mists just select that scout again all right i just want to make sure it was optimizing okay because that's gone from 1.36 megabytes down to 0 0.04 which is a much better size okay so this is literally is going to be this image let me just make sure that it's a sensible looking image uh, and i'm going to plop him on the side of the road there and just like before, I'm going to have these fade in and out. So I'm not going to have it full, uh, fully opaque. About a 7 might be good there. Uh, and I don't need any trigger on this at all because it's not going to be an active. It's going to be my button on the side that is going to bring that in to the image or not. So no actions required on there at all. I can update and I can lock that so I don't mess it up again. Yes, I know. I, I am learning. I am learning. Um, yeah, let's create a new tile. We're going to put one over this side. And we're going to do a similar thing. Make sure it's in the right place. Select my file. And I'm going to pick my other scout image there. Again, this is just these are created with mid-journey. Um, it works really nicely for me. Let's bring that one in. And... Uh, yeah, we can sort of line him up against the edge there. It doesn't matter the fact that it doesn't blend in with the back. Nobody cares. They, they really won't care about that. Um, so again, I'm going to lock that and I'm going to hide both of these. So the players won't see them initially. I'm going to do that description I just did. And then I'm going to talk about the fact that um, they can do a passive, uh, or rather I can do a passive uh, perception check to see if they can hear a rustling noise i can describe that um and then there's going to be voices and they're going to be stopped by these two scouts who are going to be inquiring to what the hell they're up to regardless of whether they've got um irena with them in theory they've got irena with them at this point but it still works if they don't okay so for this tile 
Uh, what, 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 careful. What I need to do is I need to add a tagger on here, don't I? So let's make sure that we've got this tagged as um, act one. This is, uh, whoops a daisy. Let's make sure we're tagging this up. I'm gonna call this BS <laughs> for Bavarian Scouts before you wonder. Um, Scout one, okay? So that's now got a tagger tag. All right, and we know that that will actually work. So first thing I can do is, if I'm, I'm, mine are quite simple, but if I'm using complex tags, copying and pasting will ensure that I don't mess it up. So this button is gonna have triggers. The trigger's going to be when I click on it, not when I enter it, and only for the game master. Yes, it's active. Uh, yes, allow when paused if necessary. Okay, and the actions are going to be and we've done this before, um, very simply. It's really effective. Uh, we're just going to show hide. I'm not going to select the entity because I'm using my tagger for that. Thank you very much. Um, for uh, this, it only needs to be for this scene. And I want to toggle. And I'm going to take three seconds so it fades in very much like we did for the gypsy campsite. Okay, so every time we click this button, this will fade in or fade out. Now, I'm not going to press it just yet because I need to also add in the trigger here. Now, notice, same tag. Okay, so both of these tiles have the same tag on. Just want to make sure I turn this off as active and get rid of any triggers. Okay, so the same tag on this. So when this one fires, any tile that's called that, it's going to activate on. So let's hope that works clicking on that they should fade in and I've got it over three seconds now in the DM screen that fade doesn't look anywhere near as crisp as when the player does it so I can click it again and they'll fade out again and in fact I'm going to do that to just prove the point um, because it's much much better way to check so I'm going to just quickly locally on the other screen log in Da, 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 da. Uh, it doesn't matter who I log in as, does it? All right, give me a second. Da, 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 da. All right, so if if I close this, if I bring this one over, you can see this is the player screen and they can't see. I've got to hide that button, obviously. So this is another reason why it's really good to check. I need to hide that button, but I can't see those tiles at all. So over here first thing I want to do is hide that tile so the player can't see it all right now I'm going to click this and then I'm going to bring the other one over we should see them fade in let's go there we go so those tiles have faded in uh, and now I can make a sensible judgment call on whether they faded in enough or not do you know what? I think they have I think I quite like that this one looks like he's kind of sitting on the edge here this one's kind of standing in the road I think that's just about right and then I can click this button again on here for the DM and not surprisingly they vanished from the player screen so that's exactly what I wanted to see that was easy wasn't it um, always worth checking your player experience because it will be different from the DMs of course and you notice probably that hiding that button has taken out of their view so that that's easy that's all I'm doing for this scene that's, that's it. <laughs> um, because it's going to be descriptive. And as I've said, you know, I want this to be atmospheric. I don't necessarily want battle maps for everything. And most of the journey is going to be like this. Um, so what happens when they leave these scouts? Well, the next thing is going to be the um, potentially the Van Richten's cache um, as they journey on further down the road. So while well, I'm going to create two scenes for this, um, the next scene, just bring that into the middle so it's a bit easier to see, I'm just going to call it Svalich Road. That's that's all I'm calling it. Um, I know I've got one called that already. I'll take that on navigation. I don't want that in the navigation. Um, and let's pick a new image. Just make sure I'm into the valley. Good. Uh, and let's pick um, let's pick this one. 
uh, the lighting I want global illumination on thank you very much uh, and cross over to that so oh, I'll get rid of that grid get rid of the grid <laughs> definitely gridless thank you very much okay so this is just an image for them to look at as we're describing along the along the road there um, something's not quite right I've made it gridless I've given it global illumination um, do, 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 do. I don't need either of those on thank you very much okay and now my player experience is they're literally just seeing this so again you know any silly little things like oh I've forgotten to put token lighting on or stuff like that uh, whatever it may be you can easily do so let me do one other thing because it looks horrific uh, is I'm going to change that background color outside of the scene there we go so we get rid of that horrible gray um, and we can focus on what's actually on screen there so this is just descriptive we don't need this at all if they are not if they don't know about the cache I will use this just to describe the next part of the journey uh, that's no problem but if they do indeed go off the road um, and go to investigate the cache cache whatever way you want to call it I'm going to pop this one in and this is potentially a combat scene so for this I'm going to need a okay I want to take it out of navigation I'm going to need a different map just make sure it's going to go into the correct place and the map I want is going to be this one okay so uh, there we go it's all been processed and stuff gosh I do like that <laughs> All right, so this is this is the map for it. So this is going to be the road, and they're going to come off and find the cache somewhere down here. So for this, this is because this is going to be a battle map. I do need to do things like look at the grid. Um, let's make it red again. Okay, I make it red because it's just easier to see for you guys on screen as well as for me. I'm using you guys as the excuse. <laughs> um, but we don't need it much bigger than that. I think that's probably about fine for where we are. So the path itself is five to ten foot wide, um, which is kind of, you know, enough for carts. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, I'm going to leave the. I'm going to turn the grid off. I'm going to turn the grid off. So lighting wise here, I do want global illumination on. Uh, of course, I can adjust the darkness level of the whole map a bit. So I'm going to put that down just a bit to make it a bit more gloomy. It's it's Curse of Strahd. Uh, ambience wise, um, do I want weather effects on? No, I don't think I do. I could put a little bit of mist on because they are leaving the uh, a bit, little bit of fog um, because they are leaving the road here. That might be a little too much though. That's too much. That's too much. Don't like it. Nope, I'm going to get rid of it. Now, of course, using FX Master, um, we can put on stronger or weaker fog and stuff like that. But again, because I want to be careful of how many mods I'm adding. And technically, that one's not ready for version 12 yet. I'd rather not use it at all. Okay, so we're going to need to make sure that we drop the player characters onto here, of course. I haven't got my characters on, but I can dump Haley on. And I can just check, yes, Haley can move around. Um, obviously I've still got the player window open over here you can see my my Bella pointer moving on the other screen uh, and I can just check to make sure yeah that all looks fine which is good so what actually happens here um, so you step from the road and into the woods crossing the tree line as your feet squelch in the mud and loamy soil uh, wisps of fog curl across the earth around you grant uh, gnarled trees reaching their arms overhead as grey light filters through the canopy, you walk for 300 paces, stopping, so uh, stepping softly through the mulch, blah, 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 blah. You soon realise, however, that you're not alone. Five figures shamble or stand aimlessly within the clearing. So what we could do, but bearing in mind that I'm in version 12, I'm wondering if... Let's, let's try this. We're going to try this. This might look horrific, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> it might be really bad. All right, I'm going to put that fog back on. Okay, but it's a bit, it's a bit strong. It's a bit strong. So what if I use a region uh, and I'm going to create a new region and uh, I want to I want to just draw the region uh, configure region shapes create shapes from controlled walls I don't want to do that um, let's just draw one no actually let's not let's use this tool and let's draw very roughly we'll see how this looks you can see what I'm doing here can't you uh, it's difficult for me to actually see what I'm doing but what happens if I double click there we go what happens if I draw that region I hate it just called region I've got to change something um, if I draw that region I've got my shape that's fine and the behavior I put on here is to suppress the weather now how is this going to look get rid of that initial region how is this going to look oh yeah now that's ugly isn't it that's a bit that's yeah I see I would like this to be a much more blurred rather than quite so blatant Yes, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, be gone. I hate that. Um, so ideally what I want is an area of fog off the road, um, but none of those stark lines. So um, again, without using FX Master, which is a much gives me a much more control, um, that's not really going to work. What I want to do really is kind of like semi-suppress weather. Um, <laughs> So suppress it on the road, then semi-suppress it around like in a buffer so that it's less and then have it foggy everywhere else. I think I just might leave the whole fog on uh, for now. But anyway, so what happens is as they stagger off the path, five zombies will appear. So I need to check my monsters and realize that I don't yet have any zombies. So that's okay, because we can just go straight to the SRD. We've got standard zombies here, go into our monsters, and look for our zombie. Now, what I want to do is make sure I stick this in my monsters over here. Hello? Did it... There we go, didn't do it the first time, weird. Uh, and I'm going to put my zombies out on here there we go and because I've got rotate on I can I can rotate these as well they're all the same they're just standard zombies these ones that are going to come creeping out of the mist so five figures are zombies they're also matched to the descriptions of the Lanston family so that's part of what they talk to the scouts about so I'm going to hide these because I don't want them seeing them until they come into the woods themselves um, and the sixth figure is a zombie plague spreader now that's from Van Richten's guide to Ravenloft so that's a monster that we don't have um, so what can I use for that instead well I don't have that monster I don't have access to um, that digital resource so I need to kind of create my own monster for it which is not a problem we can just start off with well actually I can duplicate I need to bear in mind that I'm potentially going to be sharing this with other people and next time I load it I want it to come in so zombie plague spreader okay so we've got that in there now very quickly if I open the original Strad module which of course I have purchased I should be able to, uh, as he talks over what he's trying to do. Monsters and NPCs at the bottom of that. We should find, hopefully, under Z. Uh, da, 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 da. We've got, well, we've got Strahd zombies. I'm not sure that we have. 
Yeah, so we've only got Strahd zombies. We don't have the zombie plague spreader ones. Um, because the original module didn't have those in. Okay, so that's slightly different. So I, that's a, one of those, oh great, you've put a monster in it that isn't in the original module. <laughs> Which is fine, they're allowed to do that. Um, and I don't have access to through that. So it's just one of the, I didn't want Annabar. Go away, Annabar. Love your stuff, man, but go away. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm wondering if they've got anything in... Apologies. I know, it's really interesting, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I'm just looking up if they've got anything in the... Uh, in the Strad Reloaded that covers that. No, so that's actually going to be in the book. So I've got two choices, haven't I? Make up my own version. Um, purchase the Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Um, not everybody can afford to do that. Or I can replace that with a something like a Strad Zombie, which is from the original module. So that's my choice. So just so you're aware, Strad Zombies are basically just a bit tougher. Um, these guys have by default have 22 hit points. Strahd zombies have uh, 30 loathsome, uh, sorry, loathsome limbs. And so when they take damage and stuff, um, things like legs and stuff get severed. Uh, they get multi-attack. Um, if the head is severed, the zombie loses its bite attack and becomes uh, blinded uh, and things like that. So it's just... Yeah, Strahd zombies are just tougher zombies. So I think I'm going to just put in... I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to put in a normal zombie. And remember, this is for third level players. Um, and they potentially... I'm going to put this... Whoop, I'm going to put it in. Um, oh, decisions, hey? Decisions, what do you do? Because again, I, I, yeah, I can go just go out and buy Van Richtens and build that. I, absolutely, I can do that. Um, but you guys might not, you know, you might not want to, you might not have access to it. Um, who the heck wants to be going out and buying an entire module just for one creature? Um, I'll have a think about that. I'll have a think about what to do, whether to make it a stra just a Strahd zombie, like the originals, um, or whether to go Van Richten's and do it that way. I will ponder that particular one. Um, right. So, sorry, got massively waylaid here. So, the five figures, these are the zombies, um, accompanied by this other uh, zombie um, that was originally the leader of the siege on the village. Uh, du -du 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 -du. It wants me to increase its hit points, etc. Decrease its necrotic damage. Yeah, that's all from, all from the module... Um, okay, so if players can reach the oak tree, they can find Van Richten's weapons cache, where Doro told them in a hollow nest, uh, in a hollow nestled beneath the tree's roots, the cache itself is a small, unlocked wooden chest containing twenty silvered crossbow bolts, a light crossbow, two healers' kits, two vials of holy water, and one potion of healing. So, ignoring the monster stuff, perhaps we ought to actually put the treasure out, right? <laughs> So let's do that. Now, again, we can go to the SRD and we should be able to find a majority of those items. So, yeah, okay. So, crossbow bolts. I'm going to make sure I'm putting these in my items. Uh, let's create... No, I don't need to. So I'm going to edit this item because these should be silvered. Silvered crossbow bolts. Okay. Which is good. Uh, under details, there is a button where I can click to say these are silvered. So that should um, that should make sure that they come into effect if you are using automation. Um, I'm not using hardly any information in automation in here. So just having those is fine. I'm going to drop these down here. There's 20 of those. So this is item piles. If you're kind of going, what the hell? How are you doing that? This is item piles I'm doing. Um, so silvered crossbow. 
light crossbow. We can slap one of those in there. Um, healers kits. <laughs> Something very wrong with me and my ability to type. Uh, so two healers kits in there. Uh, holy water. Uh, there's a potion of healing as well, wasn't there? Let's dump that in while we're here. And flask of holy water. There was two of those. Now, you know, we're going up against vampires. That's actually a really, really useful thing for them to have is that little thing there. Okay, so we've updated that um, item piles. It's already set this, of course. Um, we can change it to other settings. It's just an item pile. We could make it a container. I don't see the point. They're just going to pick these things up and go with them. Um, so, yes, make sure it's updated. Leave and hide it. Okay, so when they come and find it, I can unhide that after they've dealt with these zombies that are just chilling in the area. Um, that's it. That's all I need to do for this. I do need to get rid of Haley again. She shouldn't be on there, um, you know, because I don't want to come. I don't want to come to this scene with my actual players and find out they've got other people on there. All right, so. All I need to do is work out what I'm going to do about the plague zombie thing. Uh, I'll look that up, do a bit of research. Obviously, I didn't do that beforehand because I'm a professional. <laughs> Shut up. Um, but we've got our nice scene here for the bandits. We've got a, a, a scene for the general journey. And then if they come here, that's it. And it didn't take long to create. And I can always use this for something else. Maybe later on they just want to jump off the road and camp. Okay, I can use this scene. Um, and they can be ambushed by zombies or not. Okay, these are all hidden. They won't even know they're there. They can use it for something else if they want to. All right, bit of a weird one. Hey, yeah, surprise. <laughs> uh, let me know what you think. Leave a like, um, comment, suggestions. Obviously, always welcome. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care now.